Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, 752 Pointing's Theorem of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. Um, so when we look at the energy stored in the field in electrodynamics, um, we're going to compare it to the energy stored in the field in electrostatics or statics in general, magnetostatics, something like that. So we found before that the work it takes to build up an electric field is epsilon naught, if I can write that properly, times the integral of e squared, that's not e vector, that's e dot e actually, d tau, okay? And the work it takes to build up a magnetic field is one over two mu naught, the integral of b squared d tau. Okay, nice parallel there. Um, when we did this for the static case, um, we didn't have a compelling reason to say the energy was actually stored in the electric field or the magnetic field. We said if you want to think of it that way, that's good. Um, later on, I'm going to show you that. Um, but you could have thought as this energy stored in the particle because you have to push that particle or the, you have to you know move the currents to get the things put where you want to put. Them. Okay. So we can think of the total energy stored in the electric and the magnetic fields as uh, one half of the integral of epsilon naught e squared plus one over mu naught b squared d tau. Let's just put in the two together. Okay. When we go through electrodynamics to try to derive this formula, we're going to pick up an additional term. Okay. It's not that complicated to go through this all. So um, let's get right to it. So we have some charge and current configuration which at time t has this field E and B that it produces. Okay. In the next instant, add dt to the time, the charges are going to move around a bit. The currents are going to change, right? There's going to be a new E and B field. How much work did it take to make that change? So let's find the total work change, okay, dW. Well, that's going to be the force dot dl on each of the charges or whatever, um, each of the, you know, um, let's just get right to it. So we have small charge e vector plus v vector cross b vector. Sorry, that started off like a plus, but it ended up like a a um, dot. And then dl is the velocity of the particle times the time that it took to travel. Okay. Um, magnetic field does no work, so we get dq e vector dot v vector dt. So dq is rho d tau, some volumetric. So we have e vector dot v vector dt. Rho v is j, the current volume current density. And then we have d tau dt. So that's the incremental work done to change the fields, to move charges around, to move currents around, to change the field. Okay, And so the total work done to get to a particular um, the total work done is dW by dt I'm sorry, the work done per unit time is you integrate over the volume that you're interested in and you take dt. Okay. All right. So so from vol so for some volume it could be all of space, it could be only a region of space. That's the work um, over time it takes to get that stuff. Um, let's express J um, using a Ampere's law with Maxwell's correction. So we're going to set our J. Let's go over here now. is going to be 1 over mu naught. Um, let me pull up Ampere's law. Oh, it's right there in front of me. The curl of B. And then minus epsilon, the time derivative of E, right? OK. So the E dot J is going to be E vector 
dot the curl of b over mu naught. minus epsilon e vector dot the change in time over e. Okay. The, this dude. Okay, if we took the time derivative of e squared, which is just e vector dot e vector, that would be the time derivative of the first one dot the second one, plus the time derivative of the second one. Okay, and so we can rearrange the order here, so we basically have two. Okay, so d by dt of e squared is equal to two of those guys, right? Well, we only have one of them, so we have one half of that. So minus over two of d by dt of e squared. Okay, this is going to end up here eventually. You see the epsilon naught, you see the e. We're going to get there. This dude, product rule number six, says that the gradient of two fields cross with each other. So the gradient, oh, I'm sorry, the divergence of e vector cross b vector has to be equal to the second vector dot the curl of the first minus the first vector dot the curl of the second. Okay, well here we have that second term. Move it to this side, move that guy to the other side. And so we get um, E, I'm gonna run out of room here. Let's go over here. So we get, are you able to see this? We get E vector dot the curl of B vector is equal to um, the divergence of E vector cross B vector. Is that right? I'm doing this wrong. No, it's minus this dude, plus B vector dot the curl of E. Okay, what's the curl of E? That is the time derivative of b. It's negative the time derivative of b. So this is equal to minus minus um, b vector dot the time derivative of b vector. Remember what we did to e vector up here? Let's do the same thing here. This is minus one half of the time derivative of b squared. Uh, I didn't, I should have drawn that arrow on top. This dude up here is now in here. Okay, let's substitute this back in. Let's kind of write it out more completely. Okay, substitute back into this part of the equation. So we get E vector dot J vector equals one over mu naught Um, this dude, this is a minus, isn't it? Minus one over mu naught of this guy, let's do this first. The divergence of E vector cross B vector plus one half the time derivative of B squared and then Let's put the mu naught over here, actually. And then we have that additional, um, this is minus, minus epsilon naught over two, d by dt, e squared. Okay. Okay, now we can plug this into our work, our power formula here. So we say dw, by dt is equal to the integral over some volume of e dot j, okay? Let's see if I can simplify things here a little better. One half of, of uh, epsilon naught 
minus one half of epsilon naught d by dt of e squared plus one over mu naught d by dt of b squared d tau. This is our original web right here. That should be a minus, shouldn't it? I'm I'm going crazy here. I have minus signs, or I should have positive signs. Um, no, I'm right. I'm right. So for this term, we're going to pull out the d by dt. Okay. This is this. So this is minus the static energy of the E and B fields, the static case. And then we have this term right here, the, 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 the cross product there. So we have minus the divergence of E vector cross B vector. Well, that's an integral over some volume, d tau. Let's apply the divergence theorem. So we get minus of the closed surface integral of that volume that we're talking about of E vector cross B vector dot the A vector. Okay? This new term is um, we're going to call this new vector the pointing vector. It's going to be 1 over mu naught Okay, it's called the pointing vector with a y. Um, and it points in the direction of energy flux. Okay, so let's do minus. Okay. So the work, change in the work over time. How am I doing on time? Okay. I'm not going to run out of time yet. I'm draw a box around this dude. Okay. What did we learn? Well, we learned that um, the change in energy over time of a volume of space is the change over time of the energy stored in the fields and this flux of this pointing vector. Okay. So the, the pointing vector is pointing, it, it's basically how energy is flowing into or out of a certain volume. Okay. Now, if we went ahead and pulled in mechanics, a little bit of mechanics, a tiny bit of mechanics, okay, and we said that the change in energy over time has to be equal to the change in the mechanical energy stored in that volume. Okay. So inside of certain volume, you have things spinning and moving the kinetic energy basically of things. You know how the rotations and everything like that. Well, the change in energy over time of that particular volume of space has to equal to the change in mechanical energy. Right? The UEB, we're going to call this, this is the energy stored in the fields. Okay. So now we can have dwb dt is equal to um, minus d by dt of the integral of that minus d by dt of the integral over some volume of ueb d tau okay and then we have that extra pointing vector flux through that surface okay and so these two have to equal each other. I'm sorry, they don't have to equal each other, but you get that, um, how does this work out? This thing goes over here. So we have d by dt, let's collect terms of the integral over some volume of u 
M plus UEB d tau is equal to minus the surface integral of S vector dot dA. Let's do um, Gauss's theorem in reverse. So we get minus the volume integral, same volume, um, of the divergence of S d tau. And so we find here that the time derivative of the change in mechanical energy plus the change in the field energy is equal to the divergence of the pointing vector. Okay. So where there's a source in the pointing vector, energy is being lost. Where there's a sink of the energy of the pointing vector, energy is being stored. Okay. Um, this is actually really similar to another equation that you already know. The change over time of charge density is equal to the divergence of, actually negative charge density, thank you Benjamin Franklin, is equal to the divergence of the current. So this S vector kind of acts as a current of energy. okay? And the S vector again is just E cross B. So you take the E field cross it with a B field and that tells you how the energy is traveling in that particular region of space. Okay. Thanks for your time. Next we do example 15. Um, rather fun. Take care. Bye.